Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship. Maundy Thursday is called Maundy Thursday, as you can read in that paragraph on the front of your folder, from the word, the Latin word mandatum, which means command or mandate. And on this night of Holy Week, Jesus gave two new commandments. One that uh, says that you are to love one another as I have loved you. The second commandment he gave is do this in remembrance of me, speaking of the Lord's Supper. And so tonight we gather and remember and give thanks and receive his gifts. A uh, reminder that uh, it is customary during these uh, Holy Week services that at the end of the service tonight that we will depart quietly, um, remembering and reflecting and giving thanks. God will bless our worship together this evening. Let's uh, begin by singing the verses of the hymn printed on your folder on page one. stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. During this Lenten season, we have heard our Lord's call to intensify our struggle against sin, death, and the devil. All that prevents us from trusting in God and loving each other. Since it, are, it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ on this night when he instituted this blessed meal for our salvation, it is proper that we complete our Lenten discipline by diligently examining ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do. This holy sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on us. For our benefit, he became man so that he might fulfill for us 
the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve. So that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins and to comfort and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification, giving him our most heartfelt thanks. We take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. As our Lord on this night exemplified this love by washing his disciples' feet, so we by our words and actions serve one another in love. For we are all bread, we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. For just as the one cup is filled with the wine of many grapes, and one bread made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins, imploring God our Father for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God be merciful to you, and strengthen your faith. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We sing.
Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 24. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the just decrees. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and twelve pillars, according to the twelve tri tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Hebrews, chapter 9. <clears throat> when Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. For if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised and inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. For where a will is involved, the death of the one who made it must be established. For a will takes effect only at death, since it is not in force as long as the one who made it is alive. Therefore, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. For when every commandment of the law had been declared by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of calves and goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant that God commanded for you. And in the same way, he sprinkled with the blood both the tent and all the vessels used in worship. Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to
Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take eat this is my body and he took a cup and when he had given thanks he gave it to them saying drink of it all of you for this is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins i tell you i will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom and when they had sung a hymn they went out to the mount of olives this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated for hymn 617.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, as we just heard from Matthew chapter 26, today, this day of Holy Week, is the day when Jesus gathered his disciples together to celebrate the Passover. Passover was a day set aside for remembering, remembering. It was a day to ask and answer the question, what happened? What happened? On the day of Passover, the Jews remembered what happened, how God had miraculously and amazingly and spectacularly delivered their ancestors from slavery in Egypt. The book of Exodus tells us about this rescue, how God's people, Israel, were crying out to God for deliverance, how God sent Moses to tell Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to let my people go, and how Pharaoh refused, and how God then sent plagues against the Egyptians, blood and frogs and gnats and flies, boils, hail, locusts, Exodus chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9, chapter 10, through all of them, Pharaoh still refused to let the people go. And then finally the 10th plague, Exodus chapter 11. This one would be the worst of all. The firstborn son of every Egyptian family would be killed unless Pharaoh lets God's people go. And Pharaoh refused. Through Moses, God told the, the Israelites to get ready for this tenth terrible plague. Get ready by slaughtering a lamb, a lamb without defect, a perfect lamb. Take some of the blood and paint it on the doorframe. And when God saw the blood, he would pass over that house. That house would be saved from death. That same night, said the Lord through Moses, eat the lamb, eat unleavened bread, and be ready to go. And it happened just as God said. Pharaoh's own son was killed together with firstborn sons of all Egyptian households, together with the firstborn of all Egyptian livestock. And Pharaoh finally said, go. And God's people went. Now there's a whole lot more to that story, but you've got the gist of it. The Passover celebration was an annual remembering an annual look back, an annual asking and answering of the question, what happened? What happened? It was a celebration of amazing rescue from slavery and from death. It was a celebration of amazing gifts of freedom and life. It was a feast of thanksgiving to God who rescued them who gave them these gifts through the blood of a lamb. So this is a day for remembering. This is a day that we ask and answer the question, what happened? But there's more going on here today than just what happened. Today is about more than just history. Today we ask not only what happened, but also what happens, present, what is happening. Not only what did God do, but what is God doing. Not only what happened to them back then, but also what happens to me, to us, right now. When Jesus celebrated the Passover, he took the Passover bread and said, this is my body given for you. 
Then he took one of the Passover cups of wine and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant. Jesus is saying that we are doing something here more than just remembering what happened way back when. We're now talking about something that is happening right now, right here, for you. For just as God had rescued his people Israel from slavery and death in Egypt through the blood of the Lamb, now Jesus is saying God is rescuing all people from slavery to sin and death through the blood of the Lamb, Jesus, God's own Son. Jesus' body would be broken on the cross, his blood would be shed, and by his death, the sins of the whole world would be paid for. God would keep his promise to save and restore. By the death of that perfect lamb, God would establish that new covenant that he had promised so long before, a covenant in which God would remember our sins no more. So this Lord's Supper that we celebrate is remembering, but it's not just remembering. It's not just about what happened. It's also about what is happening. Jesus invites you tonight to remember not just the slavery of the Israelites of old, but to recognize your own slavery. Sin enslaves you. Sin is something from which you cannot free yourself. And sin will kill you, destroy you. The wages of sin is death. Because of our sin, we each are slaves. We each are as good as dead. But here's what's happening tonight. Jesus invites you to come forward and receive his body and his blood in and with this bread and wine, the body and blood which was given for you on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. Jesus invites you to come to his table sorry for your sins and to leave that table forgiven of all of your sins. Come to the table in slavery to sin and leave that table in the freedom of a heart made new and clean by Christ's forgiveness. Come to the table dead in sin and leave that table having been made alive in Christ. God's love, God's strength, God's forgiveness, God's gift of new life and freedom, these are not things that only happened in the past. These are things that are happening right now for you. So we don't just remember tonight. We give thanks for what is happening right now. Cry out to God in repentance and faith as did the Israelites of old and he will deliver you through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, by your righteousness, deliver our souls, which are precious in your sight. Embolden our hearts to pray, confident that Christ prays with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as the institution of your New Testament is celebrated this day among all peoples, Make your saving power known throughout the earth. Grant that those who have received the sacrificial gift of Christ 
would share him with the world he came to bless. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Almighty God, you have formed us after the pattern of Christ's humble service. Help us in our vocations to follow his example of self-sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Lord God of Israel, we rally to your altar in the wilderness of this world. Hear our prayers for all those who are sick. Refresh them in their suffering. Comfort them with your word and nourish them in body and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious host, you welcomed the elders of Israel to eat and drink with you and did not lay your hand on them. As you welcome us to your altar to eat and drink our Lord's Supper, do not lay your hand on us, but count us worthy to receive forgiveness, life, and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gather us, Heavenly King, around your Son's altar and throne with angels and saints. Bless our fellowship on earth, that at length we come to share this feast in eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, and all things. Redeem us, O Lord, faithful God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. At your command, Abraham prepared to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice on the mountain. Yet, in mercy, you provided a ram as a substitute. We give you thanks that on Calvary you spared not your only son, but sent him to offer his life as a ransom for many. As we eat and drink his body and blood, grant us, like Abraham our father, to trust in your promise now fulfilled in Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen.
Please stand for prayer. O Lord, in this wondrous sacrament, you have left us a remembrance of your passion. Grant that as we have received the sacred mystery of your body and blood, that the fruits of your redemption may continually be manifest in us. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the singing of the hymn on page 8. The Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ. While Pilate was sitting in the judgment seat, his wife sent him a message. Do not have anything to do with that man. I have suffered much over him today in a dream. Again, Pilate addressed them, for he wished to release Jesus. He said to them, What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ? What shall I do with him, whom you call the King of the Jews? They all cried out, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found no guilt worthy of death in him. I will therefore punish him and let him go. They cried out all the louder, Crucify him! Crucify him! Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers of the governor led him away into the praetorium. They gathered the whole band of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a purple robe on him. When they had woven a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And they knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. They knelt down and did homage. Pilate went out again and said to them, See, I bring him out to you that you may know I find him not guilty. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns 
and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Behold, the man. When the chief priests and the officers saw him, they cried, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I do not find him guilty. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by that law he ought to die, because he made himself the son of, Je of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall and said to Jesus, Where are you from? Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you, and I have power to release you? Jesus answered, You would not have any power at all over me unless it had been given to you from above. For that reason, he who handed me over to you has the greater sin. This prompted Pilate to go on trying to release him. But the Jews cried out, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation of the Passover, about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but rather a riot was underway, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this man. See to it yourselves. Then all the people responded, His blood be on us and on our children. Then Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, gave sentence that it should be as they demanded. He released to them Barabbas, for whom they had asked the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder. He had Jesus flogged and then gave him over to their will to be crucified. The soldiers mocked him, stripped him of the purple robe, put his own clothes on him, and led him out to crucify him.
Go in peace.